Well, there's accusations of racism being slung around all over the place at the moment, so I think I'll take the opportunity to sling one at the tax system. Now, you might think that's crazy and far-fetched, but stay with me. It is mostly about Sweden, but it really applies in all the Western countries where governments get most of their revenue from taxes on wages or incomes or goods or services or taxes on employers. This isn't a problem if you're employed because the firm handles it at considerable expense incidentally but at least you don't have to engage with the authorities apart from your annual return. The systems were set up after the Second World War when the economy was dominated by large companies and a large public sector and it all worked smoothly but it didn't work for misfits of any kind who couldn't get on in that kind of organisation. As a member of an ethnic minority community, I experienced this myself to some extent, although the prejudice was dying out at that time, so it wasn't too bad. I'm talking about the end of the 1950s. I'll fast forward. I've got a friend who's a Tamil from Sri Lanka. She's a Christian and she's married to a Swede, so she's got a European name. So she filled in an application form, turned up at the interview. The interviewer was shocked to find a brown person and said, oh, couldn't possibly employ you. Traditionally, the way for migrants to get into the economy was to work on their own account, for example, as market traders, um, some of the retail giants, such as Tesco's and Marks and Spencer's, began as market trading operations and then there were the tailors who some of them got big and they developed things like mass production of clothing which kept the British Army warm through two world wars others went in for things like radio and electronics which got the country's industry ready for the avionics and radar which were essential in the Second World War. So an immigration can be very beneficial for a country because it, it allows people to move into niches and grow. It's a, a sort of ecology. So it's a good thing, but it's not so easy these days. Then you could start a business you wouldn't have to bother with the income tax or the value added or submit returns every year. They weren't interested in you. Now it's very different. In Sweden it's particularly bad. There's no threshold for income tax. There's no threshold for value added tax. And so everybody with the tiniest little business operation must register. People say, oh, well, it's all right now, computer programs take care of it all, but yes, they're a help, but you've still got to enter the data. You've still got to keep all the till receipts and file them properly. And you've still got to go through the mill of being checked over by the tax authorities. It's too much for some people. It's, it's hard enough to run the business without having to deal with all that. And if you pay for somebody, then that's a chunk of the profits gone. Value-added tax is even worse because you've got to have a special till sealed by the tax authorities. It needs an electricity supply. It needs to be protected from the weather. And then on top of that, the draconian hygiene regulations. Put the two together, you've killed off market trading and you've thereby deprived migrants of an important means of getting their foothold in the economy. Integration policies don't work. They've been killed off by the tax system. So the tax system really is racist. <laughs>